Hi, it's The Wire, October 6, 2024. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, you know it's my heartfelt belief, whether we're talking about investments or whether we're talking about sports, that the public narrative is just one narrative. Right, folks? Sometimes the people around you are just wrong. Sometimes you're wrong. The point is to do your own investigation, figure out why things are the way they are. Now, you just had a fight in Australia involving someone I call a Marvin Hagler figure. In other words, whatever the world thinks, however popular or unpopular this guy is, middleweight champion Jean Abeck is one of the most important people in the sport of boxing, right? He fought a guy, Mikhailovich, who needs to be alpha in the pocket, right? He's gifted, big puncher, can hit you with shots where he does not have the opportunity to completely lean into shot, right? So Mikhailovich's game is to be deep in the pocket. And it's to bounce off of you and hit you with big shots. Right? Here's the problem. The problem is he was fighting a guy who is one of the absolute best in the sport, deep in the pocket, and who has one of the heaviest left hands in the entire sport. Right? with all res due respect to Zhili Zhang, who's on that list too, right? But understand, John Abek is a guy who wants to be in the pocket with you. If you're going to beat John Abek, you have to be able to adapt. You have to be able to force him to lift up his feet. You cannot let him go flat-footed because that's where he gets his power from. You have to move. You have to circle him. Right? If you don't, then what happens is you have a southpaw who has his head tucked. Now, this is very important. Right? This is um, the opposite of, let's say, an Ali. This guy has his head tucked, comes in at an angle where he feels you can't hit him with certain punches. The next statement I'm going to make is going to be controversial because Janabek is calling out Arislandi Lara. Right? Understand, Lara, who also has a share of the middleweight crown, Lara has remade himself from a stick and mover into an in-the-pocket guy who's trying to take you out with straight lefts, right? Just understand, as I see it, that fight, which Janabek wants, right? Lara is somewhat protected by the PBC. Interpret that statement however you want to, right? But just understand, that makes Lara, who's a fellow southpaw with Janabek, more dangerous for Janabek since Lara's punch is a straight left than would fighting Canelo. Understand, Canelo holds the key to several kingdoms, right? He's one of the champs at 168. This is kind of a throwback where the public doesn't care about the belts at 168, Canelo has moved off of. Right? The public knows who the champ is at 168. It's Saul Alvarez. Period. Right? He's the king at 168. Understand, folks are leaving the division because weight only lasts for a few years. So there's an open question on whether David Benavides 
can lose weight to get back to 168. Understand, Benavides fought Gross Dick at 175. Right? There's a question on whether David Morrell could lose weight to get back to 168. There's a question on whether Callum Smith, who fought Canelo at 168, then fought Baturbiev at 175, could lose weight to come back at 168. Billy Joe Saunders, out of the sport since Canelo broke his eye socket, is thinking of coming back. Understand, there's an open question on whether Billy Joe Saunders could come back to 168. So Canelo is the king at 168, and he's dusted off the next generation. Jaime Munguia has one loss. Edgar Berlanga has one loss. And they're both to the same man. Saul Alvarez. Right, so Saul Alvarez is the king at 168 pounds. But what I want people to do here, let's get off the public narrative for a moment is to look closely at Janabek, right? Understand, against Mikhailovich, Janabek is throwing two beautiful punches, right? He's throwing a straight left. He's throwing a left uppercut. Now, the uppercut's key because the uppercut can destroy guys who know how to tuck their heads. But understand the genius of Janabek is that when he's fighting another fighter, he takes away their left hand, their left hook, because he has his shoulder up on their chest. So if you are relying on a Canelo left hook to weaken opponents, folks, that punch is blocked by Janabek's stance. Right again, he has his left shoulder up on you. You can't hit him in the back legally in boxing if you throw a left hook with any kind of wideness on it. Right? If you're one of these guys who keeps opponents guessing because the left hook is waist level <clears throat> when you start to throw it and you could just follow through and hit the guy in the body or you can turn that left hook up and hit the guy in the head. Just understand that if a guy's stance has taken away the punch, what that means is if you throw that left hook to the guy's body when the guy has his right shoulder in your chest, that left hook is going to hit the guy in the back. If you try to turn it up top to hit the guy in the head, you're going to run into the guy's shoulder because of the angle. Right now, while Janabek is calling out Erislandi Lara, who throws a straight left. In other words, Lara would get by the defensive stance by changing the angle and coming right down Main Street, maybe hitting Janabek on the top of the head. A lot of Canelo's game would go out the window against John Beck because Canelo doesn't move as well as Lara. And Canelo, you know, the guesswork that an opponent does looking at Canelo's left hand, John Beck wouldn't have to worry about most of Canelo's left hand. Right? So if you look closely at John Beck, and I know what I'm saying. I was talking to a boxing fan at a bar yesterday and he was telling me I was crazy. Okay, fine. Maybe I am crazy. But this would be a heist for me. Right? If you look at Janabek, he looks a lot bigger than Mikhailovich. Right? Look at him. Understand. The fight before this one, Janabek failed to make weight. That's how this fight ends up getting moved to Australia. Janabek's weight cutting, at least that's the story they're telling us, didn't allow him to actually do the fight. You look at him, he's too big for 160. Maybe the 168-pound weight class that we knew of that had people like 
Benavides, Callum Smith, Morrell. Maybe that no longer exists. Right? Maybe this new 168 that has Diego Pacheco, right? Maybe this new 168 is going to have a dominant champ. Folks, Janabek's still unbeaten. Don't look at the number of fights. Look at the defenses. Right? This is going to have a dominant champ up from middleweight fighting at 168. Let's make this more interesting. At 160, I do believe Janabek Arislandi Lara is a five star fight. I believe that's a great fight. Understand, Lara did the damn near impossible in his last fight. I know the fight was slow paced, but understand it was a chess match of the highest order, and he dropped Danny Garcia. But understand, Lara, future Hall of Famer, is in his 40s, right? The Laura you knew, the one who fought Canelo in one of Canelo's closest fights to date, no longer exists. That guy is moving a lot, right? This new guy is hanging around the pocket and he's just measuring you. He's not even measuring you for a right hand. He's measuring you for a straight left. Understand, in many ways, this version of Arislandi Lara, just look at the fight style, is Gili Zhang. Right? The only difference between the two is there was a time where Lara was a stick and mover. So he has that knowledge base it's kind of like babe ruth it's kind of like shohei otani right they're they're pitchers so they know the rotation of the ball they know the pitch progression so when they transition to hitters right they have some insight that guys who are just hitters don't have here you have laura who used to be an Ollie of the 60s type back foot guy. And now here he is. He's older and he's decided to sit down on that straight left. Right? So he's that rear fighter. Think Archie Moore. Who somehow develops a lot of power. The older he gets. Right? So let's talk about 160 for a moment. Let me say this. Mikhailovich goes down early. It's like the second round. And understand, when he gets up, he looks like Chris Eubank did against Liam Smith. Right, folks? His nervous system has betrayed him. He can't even stand up straight and be still. Right? You see his body is shaking. Now, let me just say, I thought the stoppage in the Liam Smith, Chris Eubank fight, where Eubank gets off the canvas. Eubank, of course, uh, hadn't been on the canvas before. Might not have known how bad off he was. I know he objected to it afterwards. But the ref looked at how he was moving and called the fight. Great decision. Probably has prolonged Eubanks' career because I believe... When your body is betraying you, those punches that you're getting hit with hurt you that much more. Well, folks, this fight against Janabek, and keep in mind, Janabek himself says he could have ended it in the second round. Understand, when Mikhailovich gets off the canvas, he's done. Now, I know he lingers. The rest of that fight is just battery of the highest order, right? Janabek is not in the slightest bit of risk of losing his title, and here he is fighting in Mikhailovich's backyard, right? Poor Mikhailovich did not understand that Southpaw Janabek's game was tailored for right-handed fighters who fight exactly the way Mikhailovich does. Right now that we've seen the fight, the highlights are in my favorites folder. 
Just ask yourself the basic question. How happy was Janabek? Right, and understand, Southpaws tailor their games to fight righties. A Southpaw against a Southpaw is uncharted territory for them. Right, just understand, how happy was Janabek to see Mikhailovich thinking that he could beat Janabek from in the pocket. Right? Understand, Janabek's left is short. Right? His straight left is just extremely short. His game is tailored to be in the pocket. His stance is tailored to eliminate left hooks. Right? Let me say this too. Most righties with right hands right for their left the punch that they'll throw other than a jab is a left hook right they're not made to throw crosses just straight straight lefts right that's not their game right most righties when they use their left hand for punches other than jabs are throwing hooks so understand, a southpaw who is tailor-made, whose whole game is geared to beat right-handed fighters when he's in the pocket, and he knows he can eliminate your left hook, he's fighting a one-handed fighter. He's fighting a guy who is just throwing straight rights or right hooks. And just understand, if that fighter has tailor his game where he has a shoulder in the way he has an angle in the way that's stopping a left hook a Janabek could just have his right hand across his head covering the other side of his head while he's setting you up for his real shots left uppercut straight left so here's how I see things, and nobody in boxing is calling for this fight. But if you want to see Jana back in against the best, right? Beg promoters to have Jana back come up to 168 to fight Canelo. Folks, understand, Jaime Munguia and Edgar Belanga aren't remotely as efficient as Janabek is, right? Understand, Jaime Munguia is trying to dodge Canelo's left hook, right? And Edgar Berlanga is so clueless, Berlanga is over by the ropes, letting Canelo pin him on the ropes. I'm just telling you that wouldn't happen with Janabek. Let's talk about how novel Janabek is. Right? Let me say this too. I want people to go back and look at the old tapes of Rocky Marciano. Right? We fought Marciano for his supposed lack of defense. Marciano, who really leaves the sport because his manager was ripping him off and because he had a bad back caused by his lean. Right? The way Marciano stood was for defensive purposes. Right, Marciano would come in, he would have a lean, kind of like Janabek, and just to understand, because he would come in at a side profile, that would eliminate his one hand of his opponents. Right, and Marciano, one of the best short punchers in boxing history. Well, folks, you have that here with Janabek. So let's look at 160. Understand, you have a guy who is interesting. We just haven't found out how interesting. Hamza Shiraz is a southpaw, as was De La Hoya. Right? He's a southpaw fighting out of an orthodox stance. Against Janabek, he'd be better off fighting out of a southpaw stance. Right, I'm just telling you, southpaws aren't ready for southpaws. And it's the straight left 
coupled with movement. It's the straight left that I believe would give Jana Beck problems. So a fight between Jana Beck and Hamza Shiraz would have the fighters changing angles, would have them trying out a few things, right? The weakness, I shouldn't use the word weakness. He's an unbeaten fighter. The possible weakness that Shiraz might have is when you're inverted, if I throw out a jab, my dominant hand is no longer with me. My dominant hand is extended. An opponent who figures out that my dominant hand is my jab hand <clears throat> can use my jab against me to jump inside while my big punch hand is extended to evade the jab, jump inside, and just have my non-dominant hand to deal with. Right? So Shiraz at 160 against Janabek, and by the way, I have no doubt that fight's going to happen. Right? If not at 160, then at 168. Because both of these guys are going to be around a long time. Right? When you have two exemplary fighters, eventually they're going to fight each other, right? If they can find a way to be in the same weight class, right? Canelo, of course, who has been a champ at 175, wisely has made a decision not to formally enter the division, right? Because he lost to Bevel. Uh, that's after beating um, Kovalev. And Baturbiev would be a big ass for him because Baturbiev would test him in the pocket. Right? And of course, Benavides is up at 175. Let me say this too. Chris Eubank. I need for people to know who the big trainers are in the sport. And understand, Bo Mack. Yes, that's right. Terrence Crawford's trainer has also been training Chris Eubank. Now, understand, with Bomac, he has two fighters who can be someone else on fight night. Right? The reason why I'm more bullish on Chris Eubank than most people is because Eubank's only been down once. That was in the Liam Smith fight. He showed up for the rematch as someone else, didn't he? Boxes the socks off Liam Smith. That second fight is not close. Right? Isn't close. Understand, Eubank is a guy who gets what I'm talking about here. He would understand that he needs lateral movement. Believe it or not, Eubank, like Terrence Crawford, can move. Right? He needs lateral movement against someone like a Janabek. He can't hang around the pocket like Mikhailovich did, thinking that he's going to beat Janabek at his own game. Right? Eubank also, he doesn't openly fight ambidextrous, but you can tell just the way he throws punches that he's somewhat ambidextrous. And that's important, right? Because, again, you have to get... Janabek to lift his feet. I'm intrigued by the idea of Eubank fighting Canelo because I believe Eubank understands you have to get Canelo lifting his feet. Let's talk Crawford for a minute. Now I feel Crawford's too small for Canelo even though if you look at the heights they're around the same height. If Crawford were to fight Canelo the fight in Crawford's past that I believe he would duplicate would be his fight against Victor Postal, where that version of Terrence Crawford, and you need different versions of yourself, if you're going to be dealing with these elites in boxing, right? You can't have them, you know, show up with your playbook, right? You, you can't have them able to do what they do in football, where they've done film study and they show up and they say, well, 
In this situation, these are the plays he runs. Right? You have to be more random than that. The problem with Crawford, who's a closer, is that Crawford is an accumulation puncher. Right? He hits you with a few hard shots. They add up. Then you end up like David Avenesian did against Crawford. Right? Crawford doesn't have Canelo level power. Crawford doesn't have Janabek level power. Understand when you have Canelo level power and Janabek level power, you only have to be right once. Right? I would say this though Canelo doesn't have Chris Eubank level feet. He certainly does not have Terrence Crawford level feet. Understand too, if he decided to chase after Crawford like he chased after Jamel Charlo, important fight, right? Canelo is fast footed in that fight. You can't be fast footed against Crawford because you don't know what Crawford's going to throw back because Crawford is ambidextrous to the point where he can actually have the footwork work if Crawford, who's a natural southpaw, goes righty. Let me say that if Janabek faces Hamza Shiraz, the big question, and keep in mind, Shiraz is really a southpaw. The big question is whether southpaw Shiraz can actually fight as a southpaw. Right? He might be able to throw the great straight left. But the question is going to be, does he have the feet to move around the ring against a fighter who is just looking for certain angles? Let me say this with Canelo. One of the things that gives Canelo a decided advantage over a Jaime Munguia and an Edgar Berlanga is while those guys are winging hooks, you'll notice Canelo has his chin tucked. Canelo's defensively blessed. How do you get around a well-tucked chin? You do so with a Janabek level uppercut. Look at the uppercuts Janabek lands against Mikhailovich. Right, folks, I'm just telling you, I know the Janabek people aren't calling out Canelo. <clears throat> I think they feel that they don't have a chance at that fight. Um, I think they also privately know that if Janabek in his 30s gains the weight to fight at 168, he'll be unable to lose the weight to get back to 160. And I think Janabek privately wants to fight Arislan Di Lara in part because he knows Lara's in his 40s and Lara is a future Hall of Famer. That would be a big scalp on Janabek's resume. So take a hard look at the Mikhailovich fight. It's a vet fighter against a young guy fighting at home who's a little bit too emotional. Um, let's just say that Janabek had the fight come to him. Right? As Tika Tawawi, look up that name, likes to say, let the game come to you. Right? Any fighter a righty who thinks he can hang with John Abeck, a southpaw slugger in the pocket, is kidding himself. <laughs> Mikhailovich is kidding himself here, right? Uh, he's overwhelmed. The fight really ends in the second round for all intents and purposes. Let's just say um, John Abeck looks at Mikhailovich on the canvas. This is a key moment in the fight. After Janabek has dropped him in the second round. And you see Janabek with his gloves go like this. To tell Mikhailovich, player stay down. Right? I get the feeling after that round, you have a Janabek who's acting like Canelo did against Jaime Munguia. With all due respect to Jaime Munguia who feels that Canelo didn't carry him. I believe we all understood that after Canelo knocks Jaime Munguia down, 
Canelo lets the fight linger for a few rounds. <laughs> I have no question in my mind about that. I thought here, Janabek lets the fight linger for a few rounds, in part because Janabek saw how badly hurt Mikhailovich was in the second round. Um, you know, the thing that saves Mikhailovich is the knockdown happens late in the round. Right, and I believe Janabek, who knows he hits hard, understood that he could badly hurt the kid if he hit him that way again in the next three rounds. I believe he lets that fight linger, and Mikhailovich still, in front of his home fans, does not go the distance. Right, the two punches that are killing him are Janabek's best two punches. Short left. Short straight left, left uppercut. You need to look at Janabek's left hand as extremely heavy. Folks, it's one of the heaviest left hands in boxing. Right? If I'm mentioning heavyweight Jili Zhang in a video about a middleweight fight, you know how heavy the punch is. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. To sum up, Yes, I take Janabek over Canelo. Right, the hedge would be Canelo by stoppage. Understand, Canelo would not be able to pace himself against Janabek. Because Janabek's a vet who'd be throwing heavy leather deep in the pocket. Canelo would have to open up. Even though Canelo's defensively blessed, I believe Janabek is that rare fighter who would use Canelo's defensive brilliance against him. I do believe that Laura fight, if it happens, Janabek against Laura is a five-star fight. I believe Janabek against Hamza Shiraz is a five-star fight. I would not be surprised if Shiraz comes out as a southpaw for that fight. Let's remember that's what Crawford did against another Southpaw, Errol Spence. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. While I would expect Jana Beck to beat Chris Eubank, let's just say, like Larry Holmes against Mike Tyson, Eubank is the vet who has the knowledge base to make that fight have some interesting moments. Let me hear your thoughts in the comment section. Thanks for stopping by.